that. Brian, you want to take it away? I will take it away. Let me see if I can get my screen going here. It's good to see a lot of familiar faces. I think that's what I want to show. Are you guys seeing something like a map? Yes. Okay. So um, just a little background. Um, part of what the LPFA does is we try to answer a lot of trail questions and backcountry condition questions from the public. And we probably get about, I'd say around five per day um, that vary. Now this morning from somebody saying they wanted to hike the Fall Canyon Trail. So we get things like that to just like, hey, I've never been camping before and we're looking for a nice place to, to camp in those Padres and we might try to push those people towards a Wheeler Gorge campground or, or something like that. And so I thought, well, it might be fun just to have some sort of a office hours or something like this, a lunchtime <laughs> event where we can um, just kind of talk. And if you guys have any questions about um, trails or the forest or whatever, we can try to get the answer uh, collectively. And um, as Kendra said, I'll try to do as little talking as possible, but um, I think we can we can figure out answers, especially looking at, at some of the people here. There's some uh, experts on the line as well. So um, I see Greg, you have what looks like the flume behind you. Is that correct? Uh oh, you're, you're muted. Yes, it is by, uh, by uh, yep. Jameson Lake. And I assume it's when mm -hmm. we did when we did the when we were uh, doing the uh, uh, one of the stages for the trail run. I took that picture pre pre Thomas fire. So that flume is is kind of a half a flume these days. Yeah, it got uh, annihilated in the fire, and then the the debris flows that followed the the Thomas fire. But there there is talk of wow. the force or, or of uh, Montecito water rebuilding the flume. And um, we, we actually have um, interest in rebuilding that trail, the north side of the Franklin Trail, but um, we haven't uh, gotten permission yet because they're, they'll start, they're still trying to figure out what to do with the flume. All right, any questions? Anybody want to start us off? Can I start? I have a question. Yeah, Trevor, how you doing? Good. Um, so I love your maps, Brian, obviously. Um, just wanted to say that first. So I last summer, I hiked Fish Creek from Nira up to the road. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was awesome. Um, and I was wondering if, if you have any other recommendations for similarly rugged, sort of off-trail, canyon-y, slot canyon type hikes? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Where do you begin? Um, I mean, it depends on where, where you want to be, what part of the forest that you're interested in, in exploring. Um, you know, I don't want to give away too many secrets here. I just looked at who's here and there's, there's quite a few people. Now all of a sudden the pressure's on. Um, I think the best way to do that is just find find a place that's near you that you're familiar with and, and just look around, see if see if there's a canyon off of one of your more familiar routes that you're interested in exploring and just start going up that. Is that a, a good politically correct answer? I can get you. Well, that's, that's a little too politically correct. <laughs> uh, OK, yeah, I, I can see you don't want to give away any, too many secrets. Uh, what about hiking up? <laughs> Is it Sulphur Springs Canyon? Yeah, so Sulphur Spring, which is just on the other side of Fish Creek. Right, yeah, is that, that. I've never done that. Is that worth? Yeah, yeah, I've been up that a, a few times and uh, it does choke in a little bit after you, you go up a little ways, but um, yeah, absolutely. I, I think all the canyons, um, you know, are, are exciting to go up and, and explore off trail. Um, there are some blogs out there that um, kind of focus on that sort of thing. And if you find those, you, you can kind of see that, that a lot of these canyons that you might be interested with have already been explored. And there's some, some uh, pictures and descriptions and, and things like that to check out. Uh, but yeah, Sulphur Spring is, is, is a neat canyon. I haven't made it all the way up. That's sort of one of my, my dreams is actually to come from Happy Hunting Ground, drop up and over into the upper part of, of Sulphur Spring and drop down that way. Um, haven't quite found that, 
found the time yet to uh, to do that. But um, it looks like it'd be kind of a challenge. There's there's some areas where it looks like you may need to repel a bit. That's not my style. I'm not much into repelling, but um, I'd like to try to try to do that sometime. And then also from the Lost Valley side, you get up to that that overlook where you get to look over Sulphur Spring, and there's some really impressive rock, rock outcrops that look pretty interesting and exciting there. I don't know. Has anybody else has anyone else done Sulphur Spring that dropped in from the top or or come up from the bottom? No, but I'm really glad he asked. I was going to suggest that. Thanks a lot. Hey, Brian, I, I was just going to say, don't don't worry about me being here. I'm not going to hold you accountable for any information you pass on. I'm here on my lunch hour. <laughs> I did see you there, but uh... <laughs> lurking in the background. Uh, I'll introduce myself for everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Michael Papa. I'm the recreation and public services staff officer for the Los Padres. Uh, so work very closely with LPFA. Um, and all the volunteer projects, as well as the partnership projects that that y'all do for us. Um, so yeah, just join in on my lunch hour, um, wanting to meet some of the, the great people that volunteer with LPFA and, uh, you know, just see Brian and, and Kendra. And, and I can be here to answer any questions on behalf of the forest. But for the most part, just um, here to listen. And, uh, you know, a way to what I love this idea, Brian of um, just a lunchtime chat. And uh, for me, it's more of a way to just keep a, a pulse on, on our volunteer base. So thank you for having me here. Yeah, thanks for coming here. Uh, Trevor, I thought of another one that's kind of neat. Um, um, Agua Caliente off near Pandola on the upper San Inez. Um, that's kind of a neat spot. You, you go up from the hot springs. You can't drive there anymore, or, or at least not yet. And so it's, it takes it takes a, a while just to get there, but you go above the hot springs and there's the debris dam, which is kind of exciting. And then you go above that and there's some nice swimming holes. Eventually the trail sort of peters out at um, Upper Caliente Camp. And if you keep going above that, the, the, the canyon sort of opens up a little bit more and there is a, a really nice waterfall that's tucked in way back there. Um, it gets fre frequented in, the, in like late summer uh, during hunting season. That's a real popular place for hunters. I've seen them in there where, where they have, you know, one group of hunters on one ridge, one on the other, and then one coming up the middle. And they're just there to get anything that, that might spook. Uh, but that's a neat spot to go. And, and that's pretty remote. And, and I don't think I'm going to ruin anybody else's experience by recommending that. If anything, it needs more people out there. Thanks a lot. Then there's Lion Canyon. Gosh, Lion Canyon off of the Sierra Madre, that's a spectacular spot. And that, that's one that I, I've done a little bit of off trail in Lion Canyon, but it's, it's just mind boggling all the opportunities. And, and you see all the, these, these caves and, and things like that out there that would be fun to, to go explore. That's another one that takes a little while. And I'm sure somebody has, I haven't really gone the whole way up it, but I'm sure probably somebody on this call has done that at some point in time. Yeah, what about the access coming in from Koyama Valley? In, into that trail isn't that that's now on private isn't it right yeah it's been that way for i'm gonna guess 20 years carol you can nod if you agree with that yeah it's been it's been a little while and, and there's been so some the talk way to get into there is from from what mcpherson or down through santa barbara canyon mm -hmm. yep yep there was some talk a little while ago about building a new trail that would connect aliso campground mm -hmm. over and that, that was a, a dream that one of our, our friends named Richard Waller had, had sort of worked on. I think a few others as well. And I, I, I like that idea. I think that would be nice to, to restore access to the, it's the Rocky Ridge and the Bull Ridge Trail. Um, maybe that's something that we could get going for the, the uh, Great American Outdoor Act, some additional funds coming in from the Forest Service that, that might be able to, to build that new trail and create access there for the, the Rocky Ridge Trail. So I had, I had asked that question to you guys. Um, I ran into all y'all uh, when you guys were doing the trail cleanup out at Rose Valley. When was that? Last October. Okay, um, yeah. And I had posed that question. So it, when Los Padres, when the National Forest gets access to those funds, since we're a volunteer organization, does that and the, and I know that that LPFA con, like kind of contracts 
with the Los Padres National Forest Service, are those, is that, is that how those funds are being, like, can those funds be allocated towards helping other volunteer projects? Um, I'm going to take a stab at this, Michael, but uh, yeah, I think it's up to the Forest Service who they want to contract. If, if mm -hmm. LPFA or another organization, partner organization, um, is the best fit for that, I, I would hope that they would choose to go that route, but I think it's at the discretion of, of the Forest Service and and there might be some additional rules in there as well um, that I'm not aware of, but that's that's my understanding. Yeah, um, you're exactly right, Brian. We have a couple different methods of, of spending the Great America Outdoors Act funds. Uh, internally, we compete for those funds. So we're, we're putting proposals together for um, 2022 and 2023 uh, at this time. And one thing to note from this conversation is those funds are set aside specifically for deferred maintenance on existing facilities. So we cannot build new infrastructure, including trails or roads or, or trailheads, anything. It, it has to be used to um, maintain existing facilities. Uh, but there are other funds available out there for what you guys are talking about here of maybe a connector trail or just a, a new route based on um, other access not being there or having gone gone the wayside. Uh, but we, we can use the funds with contracts where we would basically put out a solicitation and have commercial companies provide proposals and go that way or more often than not we're using uh, agreements with organizations and in, in essence quote contracting yet it's it's not technically a, a government contract but we would be using federal funds um, and the organizations that we partner with are then providing some sort of in-kind contribution whether it's through labor or uh, materials um, et cetera et cetera et cetera mm -hmm. so does that help Oh yeah, I was more just out of my own curiosity of how those funds are being being snatched up. Yep. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's huge. It's really big. And uh, also remember, uh, it those funds are available mainly to the National Park Service. The the Forest Service only gets fifteen percent of the the amount of funding that that uh, oh. bill sets aside. That fifteen percent is still a big chunk of money, um, but yeah, we're happy with it. It was going to be like zero percent, so we had, we had um, a few nonprofit groups and, and lobbyists go to bat for the Forest Service as an agency uh, when when that bill was passing through the hill. Um, Do so you know if the it was the backcountry hunters and anglers were they part of those that that group that that fought for more more funding directly to the Forest Service? I, I don't know the exact lobby or organization groups that that fought. I, I know that there was at least one key player that had a lot of sway um, that was also supported by two or three other groups, but I'm sure it was all outdoor recreation oriented um, and hunter. Mm -hmm. All right, can you, you guys can still see the map? Is that shown on the screen now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so this this is the Rocky Ridge Trail here. Um, we're looking at Sierra Madre Ridge. Cuyama's over here. And so, um, as Carol mentioned about 20 years ago, this road here was closed about where that gate is. And so the, the trail from Aliso would do something along the lines of, of this and connect in with the lower Rocky Ridge Trail. But that's just... Um, it's just a, a dream at this at this time. I forgot about the map. It would be uh, yeah, it would be great if that could happen. Uh, that lion that lion uh, trail, especially Lion Canyon Trail, is a beautiful trail. It's a shame that I mean you can go down it, but then you have to just go right back up. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't I haven't been down here in it's been a few years. 
And I know there's a lot of cattle. I think the, the ranchers still are accessing the lower part of this canyon through the private road. And then there's, there's cattle up here at, at Salisbury. Um, but yeah, it's been a few years since I've been out there. One time I dropped in from Salisbury down into Salisbury Canyon here and then kind of did a loop like that around. That was kind of fun. I um, I was just out there uh, in September of last year. Um, I had kind of become friends with with uh, Dick Gibford. He's the he's a cowboy who, who lives out there permanently, you know, and uh, I asked yep. him about that trail. And he, he like showed me the entrance to it where you go down that like that main ridge that drops down into like the that little canyon just below, below those falls. So I like went down just to the falls, um, but then I was just kind of exploring around there. He gave me permission to kind of wander around his, his ranch that, that the Reyes family owns out there. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't, I didn't go further down that, that Salisbury, that old Salisbury trail. But yeah, mm -hmm. still, still very, very, I mean, heavily, heavily beat up with all the cattle out there. Um, still beautiful. Yeah. yeah, cattle are horrible for, for existing trails, but they're wonderful at making new trails. Anyone right. else? We've got some questions yeah. in the chat box, if you could take a look. Oh, so now I got to figure out how to do that too. Let me see. Right, right next to the share screen button. I know you can find it. Okay. Hi, Brian and Kendra and everyone. My name is uh, Ben Vanderkar. I don't know if you can hear me all right. Yep. Thanks, Ben. Hi. Thanks for being here. Great. Yeah. Thanks for hosting this. I was checking my emails and saw, oh my gosh, this is happening in five minutes. How wonderful. And uh, yeah, this is great. So I just wanted to chime in and harken back to the topic of funding, um, mostly because I'm going to be heading out on Thursday, uh, participating in the Tour de los Padres uh, bike packing event. Oh, cool. And uh, mm -hmm. first time we're doing it, been getting ready for it, exploring the Los Padres uh, a lot the last few months, really enjoying that. And um, <clears throat> the Tour de los Padres, you might not have heard of it. It's, uh, it's a 280 mile loop through, through the forest, trying to stay off pavement as much as possible and uh, stay out of wilderness areas and, and be respectful trail users. But one of the main goals is to raise money for a charity of choice. And uh, so <clears throat> I've been working on a GoFundMe this morning and I keep going back and forth on who I want to support. There's so many great causes and uh, specific things going on right now and have, have mostly been thinking about you all with LPFA and also Los Padres Forest Watch as two of the local organizations that I feel most inclined to um, try to raise funds for as part of this. But again, there's just so much, so many things going on, you know, save the San Marcos foothills, um, Pine Mountain logging. So I, I just thought I'd throw it out there to you all as what maybe specific projects or general organizations um, should I be considering as I try to finish this GoFundMe here in the next couple of days? Thank you. Yeah, um, well, that's a no brainer. Of course you wanna support the LPFA, right? Um, no, what actually might be good, I, I do know about the Tour de los Padres. I'm friends with Aaron. He, he comes on quite a few of our projects. Um, what might be really good for, um, for that particular fundraiser is working on something that's crucial for the for the Tour de los Padres. So if that's water availability, um, fixing, fixing up some of the springs that are along the route. Um, yeah, I don't know the exact route that he has you going on this year, but um, maybe that would be a, a, a good focus is 
any fundraising goes towards a section of, of that route of the tour to those Padres that, that might need it this year. Um, what, what is the route this year? Where, where are they, where's he taking you this year? Yeah, uh, this year we're going to head out uh, Thursday morning from the Dolphin Fountain at Stearns Wharf in Santa Barbara, and then mm -hmm. bike up to Romero Trailhead, up and over Romero to Hoon Cal, hang a right, uh, up and over down to Matillaha, and then into Ojai, or you can bypass Ojai and take Cozy Dell uh, over to Gridley, up Gridley to Howard Creek, down to Rose Valley, then you ride the 33 until Choro Grande, up and over Choro, down Boulder Canyon, out Lockwood Valley to Grade Valley Road and the Miller Jeep Trail or Yellow Jacket uh, uh, Motorbike Trail, and then back to Lockwood Valley Road, up Cuddy Valley, and then through some horse trails that take you over to McGill Canyon Road, or let's see, some, some Canyon Road that takes you kind of up the backside to Mount Pinos, then down the McGill Trail, down Quatal Canyon, out the 166 to up Aliso Canyon along Sierra Madre Ridge uh, to Buckhorn Road, and then back up and over, back to uh, ending at Brew House in Santa Barbara. Wow, and how, how long are you expecting that to take you? I don't want to have too many expectations on it. I, I'm taking the whole following week off of work. I'd like to do a little trail work while I'm out there. I was out on the Aliso Canyon Trail a couple weekends ago and uh, fell off into some yucca. So figured I'll go back there and, and do a little bit of touching up on, on some of the tighter spots of the trail there. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot to do it in about a week and enjoy myself. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen them out there before. There's a lot of snow on the Buckhorn Road. There's going to be snow a lot of places on on your route for sure. Um, I imagine Pine Mountain is still covered in snow, and the backside of Boulder Canyon probably has snow. Um, probably Mount Pinos out there as well. Uh, you know, one project that that you just mentioned was Aliso, the the Aliso Trail, Hogpen, that that area. That's always seems to be part of the route, and um, and that hasn't been worked on in a long time. So that might be a good a good candidate to you know direct the funds towards working on that trail. I, I like that trail. That's an interesting trail. Um, there's lots. I mean, no shortage of of things to do. Choro is always needing work, and and Boulder Canyon gets a little bit of attention, but you know there's no shortage of places that need need trail work out there. I was just going to ask about Boulder Canyon. Do you know the condition of that trail now, or does anybody know? I did it. Uh, two or three weekends ago and um, a lot of downed trees towards the top. Otherwise it was in really good shape, um, but I was definitely moving the smaller pine limbs out of the way and left the big ones for, for somebody with a chainsaw. Okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot of trees come down the last two seasons and I, I think one, we've had, we've had snow, you know, the previous 10 years, there wasn't a whole lot of snow. And this past two seasons, we've had a lot of snow, pretty much every storm has, has been snow. And I think that's, that's caused a lot of these trees that have been standing there without the snow to get pushed over by the extra weight. Um, we also missed last year, you know, 2020 was a, a wasted year for everybody, but we didn't really get in last spring and, and do trail work. So we, we kind of have a backlog. I guess that's a, a pun intended, backlog of, of trail clearing and log clearing from the trail. So there's lots of trees out, out down across the trail right now. Can I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Can I ask about the, um, the haddock camp working weekend yeah. or working week? Do you know what the trail looks like uh, coming from, from Reyes Creek or Reyes Campground? Yeah, yeah, we we know that one quite well. So it's the trail's not in great shape from Reyes to Bear Trap. It's it's passable, but there's a little bit of work that's definitely needed in there. Um, from Bear Trap up was a total mess. It was one of the worst sections of trail in the forest, um, in my opinion. For for a trail that gets a, a fair amount of use, it was in horrible shape. Uh, we had we had our trail crew out there last summer. They got about a mile, mile and a quarter up from Bear Trap. 
Uh, they're going to be out there again this this spring as soon as the snow melts. And their, their, their mission is to get the trail cleared all the way up to the saddle here, which is kind of the, where you drop down into the, the mm -hmm. Peter Blanca drainage. And so um, for the working vacation, we're going to have stock support coming in from Reyes Creek. And so we want to have this whole trail to, to Haddock at least stock passable by uh, mid, mid to late May. And then the working vacation, I assume most of the hikers will probably be coming in from Reyes Peak. Uh, it's probably the, the quickest um, way to get down to Haddock. Uh, of course, you could come in from any direction. There's lots of, of mm -hmm. routes that lead there. And then our, our focus is going to be working the trail from Haddock out towards Pine Mountain Lodge and then also back up to the saddle. Um, we may have to dip down into Bear Trap to do some, some tread work along that upper section there, um, which, which always needs a little bit of tread work. But it, it should be a great project. It's a nice place to be late season, Los Padres. Um, you know, especially with all the snow, it should be nice and green up there, lots of water. And uh, there's plenty of places to camp around Haddock. It's a big campsite. Hopefully the COVID restrictions will have lessened to the point where we can have like group meals. Um, we're starting to hear about other um, other groups that are, are having group meals as long as you have one server and one preparer. And we have a cook lined up to go. So he could, he could be the one preparer and cook and server. Uh, but it's great. There's there's going to be some trees to be cleared out along the, the upper part of, of Pine Mountain here. Also a lot of brushing. There's some tread work. Uh, I, I love this section of trail from Haddock to, to Pine Mountain Lodge, in particular the three mile. It's really interesting. Uh, it's a nice grade. Whoever built the trail did a real nice job. It kind of goes in and out of the little canyons and, and sidelets and things like that. So it's, 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 it's going to be a nice place to be. I'm looking forward to it. So you reckon you recommend coming down from Reyes? I think most people will come that way. It's the shortest. Um, you know, the, the road up to, to Reyes Peak should be open by then. I think it's probably about eight miles down to Haddock Camp. Haydock, Haddock, I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, I think it's Haydock, but I can't reprogram myself. Yeah, uh, another okay. way would be come in from, from Thorn Meadow. That's, that's another option. Or Reyes Creek. I mean, there's, they're all nice. They're all nice ways to go. I might avoid coming in from Peter Blanca. That's, that's probably going to be the hottest way to get in there late late may might be a little sticky coming up that way but there's there's a lot of work going on the gene marshall trail the forest service has a ccc crew that's going to be spending two eight-day hitches out of Piedra blanca they're going to be working down a little bit kind of cleaning up this area and then they're going to be working up towards pine mountain lodge and so we have another project that we haven't advertised yet but but the, the way the seas are working is they're going to be at, there for eight days this is um, in april and then they go away for six days and we have to provide a camp sitter to watch their camp. They're leaving all their tents there at the Blanca camp. Hmm. And so during that time, we're going to go in with, with some specialists with grip hoists and crosscut saws. And we're going to go up and, and get rid of all the trees up to Pine Mountain Lodge. And there's a few other spots where people have cut out sections of trees, but they've left these, these giant rounds that are kind of precariously hanging over the trail. So we're going to go in with, with grip hoists and kind of pull those down and then move some big rocks around and, and clear some slides. So we, we want the seas when they come out here to work. We want them doing the type of work that we don't want to do, that volunteers don't want to do. And that's just grubbing. And there's there's grubbing and brushing. There's miles of that. So we're going to go in and kind of do the select fun fun work um, while they're on, you know, while they're on their little leave. And then they come back and finish up their hitch uh, for the second eight days. So um, if all goes according to plan, this season will pretty much work every section of the Gene Marshall Trail at, at some point in time. So it's a it's it's going to be a good uh, season for for Gene Marshall summertime and and fall. Hey Brian, I'm going to read Tony's question in case you couldn't find the chat box. Uh, he's interested. Yeah status of the trail work on Santa Cruz between mm -hmm. in the Santa Cruz station and if it's passable. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that's one we get quite a bit as well. Let me see if I can navigate over to Santa Cruz. Uh, where are we? Okay, here we are. Here's Santa Cruz station and um, Up Rosso is right there. So yeah, there has been some work. Um, Sage Trail Alliance and LPFA, we've both been, been kind of tag teaming on this. Um, we've done some work coming down from the bottom or from the top, um, as has Sage. I think the trail is pretty good. 
from Alexander Saddle down to where the um, where the slides are, where the big crib wall is. Um, we left the first like 50 or 100 yards there in rough condition um, so that the motorcycles wouldn't start powering down the trail. Um, but once you get through that first 50 yards or so, it should be fairly good to the slides. The slides, no work has been done on it. People are getting through. Uh, when, when you say passable, I think that's kind of a hard term because um, we have been hearing of people that get to the slides and they get spooked and turn around and leave and other people are going through no problem. Mountain bikes have been going through. I'm sure they're walking. Um, and then below the slides down to, to 19 Oaks, there's been some work, some brushing. Um, you know, it's not in beautiful shape by any means, but again, I, I would call that section passable. Really, the only thing is those, those are a little scary and um, turning some people back. So the slides are a big problem. Um, it's, it was a big effort back in the 80s to build those crib walls. They're all destroyed. And um, I think there might have to be some additional funds available, maybe the Goa money um, to work on, on those slides and, and you know, completely re-engineer them. Uh, in the meantime, we're hoping to get in there and just sort of cut a safe path through so that at least hikers and mountain bikers can get, get past the slides. Um, I think it's gonna take a lot to get it stock passable, at least, at least to the point where you could advertise it as being stock passable. I think that's a few years out at this point in time. But um, that's, that's the front side of Little Pine. Down the back side, uh, there, there has been a little bit of work. We've done some work on the first maybe half mile down to Little Pine Spring. Um, the Ray Fire burned just this upper part. It would burn all the front, but it just burned this upper part here. And that's what we've been kind of focusing on. It's the sort of the Little Pine Bowl, that kind of northwest facing side off of, of Little Pine. And we've retreaded most of that. Um, once you get to Little Pine Spring, um, the tread is, is there, it's just rough because there hasn't been a lot of access. There haven't been a lot of people hiking it over the last couple seasons, three, four, four years. Um, so it's, it's passable, but again, it, it, it's, there are gonna be some narrow spots here on the 40 mile wall as well. Um, if you have a, a fear of heights, it's probably not the right trail for you, um, but it certainly is passable once you get over the top. Um, we have been working from Santa Cruz Station up and we've almost connected to the 40 mile wall. Um, our next phase is to get around and start retreading the 40 mile wall. We're hoping to do that this spring sometime. And I know we have a week, week dedicated to that in June that we're going to be out there working on that. But it, there's a lot. There's a lot of dirt to move out there and, and um, it needs a lot of attention. Thanks, Brian. We also had a question about um, bear canisters and if they are necessary um, and where. Yeah, I would say, well, they're not required. I do see that question. Um, I don't really know of anybody who takes bear canisters out in the Los Padres. I'm, I'm sure some people do once and then they probably never bring it with them again, but they're awkward and bulky and they, they weigh a lot. And um, I don't think they're necessary. Um, we have heard of, of people's tents and backpacks getting uh, messed with by bears, um, but it's usually when people aren't around. Um, I think what I, what I do is generally I sleep with my food. I know that sounds really stupid, but I just keep it in my tent. I haven't had any problems. Um, I also usually have a dog with me, but the bears around here, they're not, they're not very aggressive, knock on wood. We want to keep it that way. Um, but I think if you were to, you know, keep your, 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 your campsite clean, hang your food, um, put it, you know, someplace where it's not easy for, for bears to get to, you'll probably be okay. Um, did I mess up with that answer? What do, you, what do you think? What do you think, Steve? What's your answer to that? If I can pick on you. Um, none of the old timers ever carried canisters or even hung their food. I always felt like I was more conservative than a lot of people that I hiked with because I would hang my food up. But yeah, for, for the most part, um, the bears, I've only heard of, I've only been on a trip once when a bear messed with somebody's day pack when they weren't anywhere near it. And uh, that's all I've ever heard. Never heard of a bear raiding anybody's camp and none of the old timers were worried about them. 
I'm more worried about squirrels, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the one the one time I, I, I saw a tent get messed with, it was a, um, a trail crew that was in Alamar Canyon and they were there for three weeks. And one day they, they left to go do the trail work, came back at the end of the day and one of the tents had been ripped open and some of their stuff, they did actually have, have bear canisters now that I think about it. And some of their stuff had been moved around a little bit, but um, that's the only time I've heard of any, any of the tents getting messed with. Anyone else have bear stories? No stories, but if you want to see some great footage of some cute bears in the Los Padres, um, check out Los Padres Wildlife Enthusiast on Instagram. They've got some great, uh, great footage of really cute bear cubs uh, in the Los Padres. So that's fun to watch. Um, I had a bear wander by my camp in Santa Paula Canyon. Oh, again, maybe 20, 25 years ago. Um, I was up on the higher terrace looking down and I saw the bear, but he didn't bother anything. <laughs> I just went by. So uh, and I kind of agree that I don't think there's any need to hang to uh, use bear canisters, but I often would hang my food up to keep the like the squirrels and the skunks and the mice and so on out of it at night. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of stuff sacks ruined by mice. So I really think bear canisters are best for keeping mice out and probably not bears out. <laughs> That's my philosophy. So I use uh, a uh, like a, a really lightweight wire mesh sack specifically for for squirrels and, and mice too. It's like <clears throat> it's what's common <clears throat> what's commonly used in like the Grand Canyon or more like desert um, habitats. And it's, you know, it's got a really, really tight Velcro over the top of it. And it's really lightweight wire mesh bag. Um, so it like, you know, compresses down. It's not very heavy, but it'll keep, keep things from biting through, you know, because some of those little like cinch sacks are, that's just sitting on the ground on my soul, come and eat right through that. Hey, Brian, I got a question. I'm planning a trip to Cove Camp from Agua Blanca Trail, and I was just wondering if you had any intel on the trail. I know it's uh, considered an unmaintained trail, uh, but I've gone through trails like Alder to Sespe Hot Springs, no problem. So I was just saying if it was something similar to that. Yeah, so uh, that's a good. That's a real good question. Um, part of the Condor Trail. Uh, so you do know there's a new trailhead. Um, you, you'll be able to drive all the way to pretty much the base of the Pothole Trail. Um, that is brand new. Um, I did that a couple that's... weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't have. Uh, we actually have a volunteer who just got approval um, to go in and do a survey of the Agua Blanca. He's not going all the way up to to Cove Camp, but he's going to do Pothole and Agua Blanca up to Log Cabin. So we should have more information on that in the next week or so. Um, I know there there was some trail work uh, two years ago, so a, a pretty extensive trail work up to Log Cabin. Above that, it's been flagged. Um, and I think it, my best advice above Block Cabin is look for flagging, but but take the path of least resistance, and just you you shouldn't have any problems getting in there. There are sections that that the trail is quite nice, and you can find some old tread, and then other areas where where it's a lot of uh, bramble, and you just kind of be wandering around there for a little bit. But you should be able to to patch your way through and, and make it to Cove. All right, cool. Looking forward to it. Thank yeah, you. that's a that's a great spot. Okay, yeah, spot. we checked out a uh, Devil's Gateway a couple weeks ago and just fell in love with the area. So we want to do a little bit more exploring. Yeah, that's that's a, a neat part of the forest because um, it used to be that you would have to park pretty much right here, and then you've got about a four mile walk just to, to the point where you get to the. You're, you're walking four miles on pavement just to get to the point where you can get onto trail or dirt. But now that the trailhead has been moved, that's going to, I think it's going to 
bring a lot more attention and activity to the Agua Blanca and Pothole Trail, um, which is good. It, it definitely needs it. It's, it's a nice place that is underutilized. So we'll see. Yeah, be sure to, to post on High Close Padres when you get back and let us know what you found. Yeah, we'll do, I'll do a trail report. Here's a question for the group. What headlamps are you folks using and finding to last, not last the longest in terms of how long the batteries last, but just be reliable and, um, you know, work for more than a couple of months? I highly recommend the Phoenix HM50R. It's rechargeable and I've taken it on the High Sierra Trail and only charged it once. So it's like five to six hours. Thanks, that's one of the ones I'm looking at that and the zebra light both sound like if I had to pull the trigger, it might be one of those. So um, good feedback, thanks. Could you put that in the chat as well, Jesse, so we can see it? Yes, of course. Thank you. Any other questions? I can show some photos. I've got some photos to show. Hi, hi Brian, it's Jennifer. <clears throat> Jennifer, hi Jennifer. I know you can't, I, I put it in the chat, but hold on. I do have questions. Can you see the chat? Yes. Okay. Um, so my questions have to do, since I don't know that much about, oh, sorry, hold on, hold on. I don't know much about potholes in Agua Blanca and I'm getting calls. Um, just so I know, what's the best access to get to Agua Blanca? Is it now at the pothole trailhead and they hike along the pothole trail or is it still better to just hike along the road and to, to access the actual Agua Blanca trailhead? And are both trails in pretty good condition? Yeah, um, I think, most people are probably going to start doing a loop, I would guess. Um, it is just a beautiful loop. It works out logistically very well for a weekend. Uh, it's probably about a day. I mean, again, it depends on where you're going, but I'm just thinking about most people are probably going to go to Log Cabin. Um, my recommendation would be to hike the road and, and come in from Agua Blanca. Um, going up the pothole is, is pretty steep and miserable. Um, it starts out just kind of grass. I, I, I kind of feel like it's hiking on the hurricane deck. You're just going straight up and up and oh. up and up. Um, there, there is an old trail. Um, there are some, some very faint switchbacks that are kind of hidden in there, but most of the traffic is going straight up the ridge. And, and so um, it's certainly passable. Um, Pothole Trail was worked uh, pretty substantially, maybe about oof, maybe six years ago. It's probably still holding up quite well. Um, Agua Blanca, I think the crossings might be a little bit um, hard to see, you know, with, with the seasonal regrowth at each of the crossings. But I, I think as far as Los Padres go, you certainly could find harder trails to hike than that. Um, so um, how far is it from the, the new trailhead to get to the Agua Blanca trailhead? How long do you hike on the road for? Uh, you kind of guess like a mile, a mile? Or two yeah. miles. About a mile, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you think that's the better the better access point? And then can they do it? You're saying to do a loop, they can go back to the, um, I guess, to the pothole trailhead. Then. Yep. Yep. I I think okay. if I, again if I had to recommend, I think I would go um, counterclockwise, and and plan on coming up and over a pothole on your way out. Okay. And you pack the lighter. You, how far is that loop? Uh, I don't know, 20, 15, 20 miles. Sound about right. <laughs> yeah, no more than that. Maybe yeah. a little. But um, I was going to say, didn't uh, Alan Coles had some uh, trail work projects planned on, on the trails. Do you know if he did them? He has not, but he, he's, he's, he just got approval to go and scout it. Okay. And um, yeah, so 
uh, the, the Forest Service is still, you know, being cautious of, with regards to allowing um, volunteer projects. We just started getting volunteer projects approved in the last week or two. In fact, our first first volunteer project is today. It's going on. We have um, about five or six people out doing some work on the North Cold Spring Trail. But um, I would imagine, you know, Alan is a guy named Alan Coles is sort of the, the caretaker or the adopter of this system of trails he's been working on it for for decades uh, he's an early season guy he likes to get all of his trail work done like this is late season for him and um and so he's he's in there scouting it i imagine he might try to get one one day of work in there maybe one weekend but um he, he really is a early season type of guy i see you now jennifer hello hi um, the other thing I, I I wanted everybody to know, maybe they already know, but there is no fee to park. You don't have to pay the fee. I, I don't know if everybody knows that. You don't have to pay the fee when you go through Pyru. That's great. So you just let them know that you're parking at Pothole Trailhead and they give you a pass. So that's that's our understanding. So just want to make that clear. That's what we put on our website. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. This is, this is also the start of the Condor Trail. And the Condor Trail goes up pothole down and then you're, you're kind of off trail up to Cove, in and out of trail. And then from Cove, really to about this point, there's really not much trail in there at all. You, you can find um, old blazes on trees. Some of the old oak trees have these nice blazes on them. Some of them are just hanging there by themselves. There's no trail. It's just, just kind of an ancient route through there but it's it's passable and then you get to ant camp and in the, the buck snort trail and then you know continue on towards uh Sespe from there brian can you explain the closures of tar creek yeah um tar creek is very easy to explain um See here, uh, this is Tar Creek, where am I? I think Tar Creek's right in here, it's not labeled, but oh, there it is, Tar Creek. Um, this is the Sespe Condor Sanctuary, public entry prohibited. Next question. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's pretty easy. Yeah, Tar Creek goes through the Condor Sanctuary. It's against the law to be in the Condor Sanctuary. And that's why um, I think for, for a few decades, there, there, there is kind of an old trail, and it might even be an old roadbed that goes down Tar Creek. And for a while, um, people were going out there and, um, you know, using the, the canyon access down there to the Sespe. It's a beautiful place, one of the most beautiful spots. Um, probably shouldn't have said that either. But uh, then I think what I understand is that there, there were some climbers that had left some ropes down there, and a condor got hung up in the ropes and hung itself. And um, and then with social media kind of becoming a, a thing 10 years ago or so. Um, some, some group out of LA posted about it on their, on their social media site and it just started getting overrun. And at that point in time, the Forest Service uh, took a pretty aggressive approach to shutting it down. That's probably three or four years ago. And um, I know we were part of this task force that was monitoring social media to see who was, who was trying to advertise to go into Tar Creek. And I think the last couple of times I've been through there, I haven't seen any cars parked there and, and they've, they've done a pretty good job of um, disguising the trail. I'm sure some people are sneaking down in there, but um, they shouldn't be going, going in there. Oh boy. Joseph, that is a tough one. Yeah, you guys gonna make me try to answer this thing? Um, what do you think I am, Craig Carey? Uh, <laughs> I would suggest going to Craig Carey's website and doing a search for what all those numbers and things mean. It has to do with, I think, township and and uh, I, I'm not gonna even try. But they are forest service numbers. There's there's a, a, a reason, you know, as to as to the designation of them and, and all that, but I'm, I'm not gonna try. Yeah. I've I've worked for the agency for almost 12 years, never been able to figure out the, the rhyme or the reason behind that nomenclature. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Craig Carey, we could probably find it. Kendra, you probably could do this. On his website, he has a whole um, diamonds in the rough, or I think that's what he calls his, his blog posts. 
and there's a whole one dedicated to how the naming of the roads and the, and the trails is determined. And it's pretty simple. There's an equation, um, but yeah, the best thing to do is find that. Real quick, back to Park Creek. Do you guys know if the all the graffiti got cleaned up after the closure happened? Um, I know that there has been some graffiti removal projects in there. I, we, we were going to work with Ellie Mora on one of those, and I think it was sh shut down with this latest COVID closure. Um, I, I think probably there has been some graffiti removal, but there probably is more graffiti there still as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice, you know, I, I spent some time looking on Google Earth because a lot of people come down here, you see here, this is what's called a cherry stem and there's a few of them here. So you have your, but the trail goes right through the middle of it. Same thing here with the passage along the Sespe. And it's a popular route to, to hike in from, from Dill Flat, get to Alder, go down Alder, um, past Shady, and then, you know, take a few days to go down the Sespe. And it used to be that, that everybody would come up Tar Creek, but now that that's closed, you get a lot of people that are coming out the bottom here through the Devil's Gate and into Fillmore. Um, but we, we spent, I spent a lot of time on Google Earth just kind of looking at any possible way that we could get a trail back up to the road here that would bypass all the angry owners down here who don't want people going past their property and also might make it a little, e little easier to do a loop trip but there really aren't very many good routes that you can you can access this. It's it's pretty steep country in there. As if you drive through there, you can look down and there's a lot of oil activity as well. So I think for the time being, people are going to have to hike out to the to the road. Brian, I I did find the Craig Carey Forest Road and Trail Naming Conventions from his blog. So it's mm -hmm. it's in the chat if you're curious to find that. Yeah, I see a question about Santa Paula Canyon. Um, yeah, that is definitely a concern, Jesse, for sure. Uh, there, there is a group that's that's been working on this with the Forest Service and and the, the CHP and Sheriff and um, Tom's Kindness College and and everybody everybody involved there to to try to figure out a plan um, as to how to control Santa Paula Canyon a little bit. Santa Paula Canyon just blew up last year. It, it it eventually led to the closure of the canyon. I think it was closed for maybe three or four months, maybe a little longer than that. Uh, but lots of graffiti, lots of people going to the bathroom inappropriately. Um, miles and miles of cars. I think somebody might have been clipped by a car as they were hiking um, Highway 150 up to up to Santa Paula Canyon. Um, I know there's been talk about putting in some some porta potties um, about a mile in. That might help a little bit. Um, there is active graffiti removal. Um, there's there's some really dedicated volunteers that that are headed up by by Ellie that that have been going in there and helping to keep the place clean. Uh, we've also talked about having some uh, like more of a presence there, maybe um, just having some some volunteers that might wear yellow shirts or something like that walking around. You know, not giving tickets or anything, but just having a presence and hoping that that people might be a little bit more respectful if they know that people are around. Um, but that, that, for one reason or another, there seems to be a lot of graffiti and, and trash in Santa Paul Canyon more than almost anywhere else. I don't know how to stop it all. I don't think anyone does, but, um, you know, hopefully we can, we can make it better than it was last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so so how's that uh, middle hurricane deck trail right now? Yeah, let's get on over there. Uh, it's quite a ways away, isn't it? Oh, of course, this map doesn't show it. I'm going to gripe here a little bit about the Forest Service. I think it was 2008 or so that was the last map that they showed. Oh, I'm gonna, sorry. Anyway, starting in 2012, the Forest Service decided to break this off into two maps. And so if you're gonna do the Lower Siskwak Loop and use the Forest Service map, you have to buy two maps, their Northern map and their Southern map because they decided to break off the trail right here at Naira, which is you know, one of the more popular trailheads. So yeah. anyway, it wasn't a very, they might've sold more maps, but it wasn't very good thinking. Sorry. 
Okay, well, you guys know where that is. Uh, yes, so we are working on White Ledge. From White Ledge over has been worked uh, the, the, the mile and a quarter towards Lost Valley, which is over here, um, just Valley on this map. Um, and then two years ago, we worked about two miles across from Lost Valley across towards White Ledge. So there still remains about a maybe a mile and a half in the middle there. We do have a volunteer project scheduled for April. Um, we would love to have more people sign up. I, I think our limit right now is trying to have around 10 people, and I would be surprised if we got that many. Um, but we, it's a bit of a hike out here to White Ledge, and we do have some stock support coming in so they can help bring in um, some tools and things. But we're gonna try to, to punch through and connect uh, this, this, this last mile and a half that's, that hasn't been worked between the two sections. Um, the central part, which was the question being asked, uh, there, there hasn't been any work done in the central part of the deck um, that it, not no real concerted work. Um, it seems like there is a, a group of, of volunteers or, or hikers that tend to walk it with loppers and they kind of keep it open here and there and, and some flags. Um, so people are getting through there. Um, there's one kind of dangerous slide section that's closer to the Lost Valley side. Um, we've been hearing some reports that it's getting a little scary again. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a Forest Service archaeologist was going across the deck doing a survey, and they were coming from the schoolhouse all the way to White Ledge. They got to that slide, and it's maybe, I'm guessing, like three quarters of a mile from Lost Valley, something like that. And it was so scary, they had to turn around and walk all the way back. They couldn't finish their survey. So we went in there, and we, we cut kind of like a two to three foot, I'm, I'm calling it a goat path, just a quick trail that goes through there. Um, we left the pick out there. So there is a pick there in case you get out there and it's a little scary. Um, I guess it depends on which side of the slide the pick is on, if you have to try to go across it to get to the pick. But um, people are getting through, but that is a little bit of a sketchy point. Um, but yeah, there hasn't been any trail work, nor is there any planned, to my knowledge, for the, the central part of the deck. Uh, we will be working on the east, the west side of the deck, uh, probably this fall and next spring. That's kind of on our itinerary. We we're going to do it this year, but everything got pushed back due to COVID. So, yeah. You guys want to see some photos real quick and then we can call it a day. Yes. Okay. And this is let me see if I can figure this out. Got it. So you guys should you see photos now? Yep. Okay. So um, I just got back uh, three weeks ago now. I did a, a pretty long survey across the Santa Barbara backcountry and um, found that the Medulce Trail, which goes from Medulce Camp up to the Buckhorn Road, it's three miles. It was in beautiful shape three years ago. It's now a mess. And so we're, we're going to go in there. We actually have a volunteer project next weekend um, where we'll be hiking in from Santa Barbara Canyon up to Medulce, spending four days working on the trail there. And I just want to show a couple photos. This is the junction there at, at um, Medulce Camp. Um, this was taken, like I said, three weeks ago. There's probably more snow now than there was then. Uh, but the Medulce State Camp is right down in here. It's a beautiful spot. I'll go through this pretty fast. But there are about 70 trees down um, in this in this uh, three mile section of trail. And, and most of them are in the first mile, mile and a half from camp. So if you're wanting to do some crosscut work, if that's your your thing, um, this is a good project for you. This, this is the biggest, nastiest one. It actually is a cedar tree that fell and took out an oak tree and they're all kind of linked in on top of each other. It's, it's, it's a mess and you can't tell in this photo, but that's probably a three, three to four foot diameter tree. It's a, it's a pretty big one. Um, a lot of bear activity. Here's some bear scratches. This, this tree has been standing there a long time. Um, some more, these, these are part of the, the 70 trees too. They're not all massive trees, but there's a lot of downed oak trees and um, almost all of these trees that are coming down, they all burned in the Zaka fire, which was now 14 years ago. And um, as I mentioned, the, the, the recent snow is just pushing them all down. And um, it's kind of a mess in there. 
and this is a really awesome trail. I, I love it in there. It's, um, you know, you, you're in the pine trees and there's a bunch of cedars and then that's like the first mile out of camp and then you get up into the chaparral um, for about a mile and then the last mile you're, you're back up into the pine trees again. Um, and the chaparral looks like this too. There's one section that uh, you had to crawl, but most of it you were able to push through. But it's um, it's crazy how fast things have been growing growing out there. And you you take your your foot off the gas for a little while, like we missed the season, and you're just so far behind. Um, like like I said, we had this trail in, in beautiful shape. I think we'd worked it three or four times, had it open, and you know we disappear for a couple years, and and it just takes over again. Um, here's here's some more of the trees. These are further up the trail. Um, closer to where, to where you get the ocean views up, up just beyond the lookout. Trail. And then um, above the, the lookout trail, get nice views of the ocean. It's, it's one of the more, this top three quarters of a mile or so is, is one of the more scenic parts of the, of the forest, in my opinion. It's, it's beautiful up there. So anyway, I'll take a look if anyone is interested. I think that event is posted on our Facebook page or you can sign up. It's going to be uh, led by Mike Smith, who is a, uh, a legend um, of the forest here. He's been doing a lot of work out there. and um, He also uh, does a great job of keeping everybody safe while also having a good time. Keeps it light, um, but uh, again, with an emphasis towards safety. And if you've never done trail work before, Mike's a, a perfect one to go with on your first time. He, uh, he does a really good job of explaining things and, and making everybody feel welcome. And um, yeah, he's, he's just, he's a terrific trail leader, probably the best there is. So if you're interested in coming out and, and seeing a remote part of the forest and, and, do, and helping get the trail back, um, check it out. And, and don't tell Mike, I, pr I praised him so much. He'll, you know, we don't want that to get into his head. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have some kind of snappy comeback yeah so uh can i rant on fires for a minute yeah so uh i went on a backpacking trip a couple of weeks ago and we started off on friday afternoon and and me and a friend were headed out to a, a campsite that we knew well and we were really looking forward to having a campfire it was so darn dry on the hike out there and there was no water anywhere near and even though the fires were allowed there was no way we were going to have a fire and um a, a few weeks before that i was in the silver peak wilderness and it was crawling with people i've never seen that many people out there and they all wanted to have a fire and they were setting up gorilla camps all over the forest and building little fire rings and building fires and then not putting them out so uh, I, I'm just afraid somebody's going to have their campfire, ha have all their coals blow in the wind and burn the forest down because it's just being so heavily used right now. And even though fires are technically allowed, there's a lot of times that they're just not a good idea. So that's the end of my rant. Thank you for that rant, yeah. Steve. Yeah, one of my um, favorite tools that I bring on every backpacking trip is a little collapsible bucket. And um, I think it's made by Sea to Summit or Surf to Summit, one of those two companies. And it, it just collapses into a little ball and you can you probably get like a couple gallons of water, maybe a gallon and a half. And uh, it's, it's great for ex extinguishing your fires. Um, a few times, you know, I've had to pull it out and, and use it on other people's fires that just left their fire going or it hot. So that's a nice tool to have. I actually like to reach out to them and see if they can give us a bunch of those things somehow and, and we can give them away to people or, or something because they're, they're great tools to bring along. Well, it's 108. How'd we do? 108. Sounds great. Should we do this again? Yes. Yeah, it's fun. Um, yeah, um, let, let me just throw one more quick little announcement there. Um, 
we are going to be revamping High Close Padres here soon. And so um, we haven't quite figured it out how we're going to do it, but we'll be um, probably asking the, the public, all of you guys, everybody who uses the site, what you want, what you're missing, what frustrates you with the site, what we could do better. And so, um, yeah, really exciting. It's, it's long overdue to do a, a, an update and a revamp of High Close Padres. And so, um, I think we've had it now for like five, five or six years, and and it's we're, I'm real excited about this. Me a lot of work. Um, the, the web designer, who's a friend of mine, he's not responding to my emails right now because I think he understands how much work it's going to be. But uh, we're both excited about it and, and looking forward to it. So um, if you, if you know High Close Padres and you have some updates or information that you'd like to pass along about what you like and don't like, please share with me and and uh again you'll probably see some more announcements about this soon uh, yes and we will be recording this recording is going to be on our youtube channel so if you're not already please subscribe to our youtube channel um we've got great content coming out and um all of our yeah virtual learning uh opportunities are, are going to be posted on there so um if you haven't seen any of our seven minute storytelling nights or other cool virtual events that we've done, um, make sure to check out our, our YouTube channel. What is the YouTube channel? And I will post it in the comments here. So coach Garcia, what do you coach? Uh, I'm from St. As high school. I coach soccer. All right. Yeah, and I'm a, I logged off cause I had a class. So now I'm on lunch. <laughs> I teach in uh, in Lompoc. Cool. I'm a coach as well. I coach baseball, but oh, for, awesome. little, for little league. Oh, awesome. So uh, we need to get a hundred subscribers to get a, our custom channel domain for, on YouTube. So share our channel, subscribe. Maybe we can change it to youtube.com slash LPFA. <laughs> And then Kendra, do you want to, we have a leave no trace event next week. Is that something we want to talk about yeah, right now? You, Yeah, we've got a great event next um, Tuesday, this Tuesday upcoming uh, night from seven to nine um, run by the folks at the leave no trace center for ethics. We're super excited to share that. Um, it's in our events uh, calendar or no, it's not. But if you did get our email today about this event um, it's in that email. So um, I can send the link as well, but we're super excited about that. We're specifically focusing um, on tackling the graffiti issue that has been emerging around the forest. And, um, you know, we know that most folks are already kind of familiar with leave no trace principles. So this is going to go a little bit more in depth on uh, how to, how to share the leave no trace principles um, within our, our communities. All right. Well, everyone enjoy your weekend. Hopefully you're getting out on the trail this weekend and, um, yeah, let us know what you find out there. Are we good to go, Kendra? Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great weekend, and thanks for being here today. Take care. Thanks, Kendra.